Hey, Mighty Good Friends, this is Amy with another Mighty Good Conversation. Today we have Shannon Wallace with Musical Memory Care. I'm really excited to get to talk to her about her programs. Shannon is a certified dementia practitioner, get, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and is a 25 year plus professional uh, international touring jazz vocalist specializing in interactive music workshops for people living with dementia and um, cognitive impairment. So I'm excited to see how music uh, works with this population and what the great programs that you're offering that we're sharing on A Mighty Good Time right now. So Shannon, tell us just a little bit about your programs and kind of how you got started. So I've been doing this program for about six years now. Um, Pre-COVID, it was in person. And uh, when COVID hit, um, all of that work went away. So uh, we all know the story at this point. So. Of course, we have to get then uh, creative and agile and a, a virtual component was something that I always wanted to do, but kind of never had the time. Um, but uh, COVID lent us a lot of time. So I took about three and a half months to then learn what I didn't know, which was a lot, and then um, kind of create this platform and launch it. So I launched it on June 1st of 2020. And so we're, you know, now we are, you know, further along in this process and and uh, I've got a lot of um, wonderful supporters. I've got Barrow Neurological Institute as a supporter, AARP, the national platform as well. And, uh, you know, a few other organizations like uh, the Alzheimer's Association and um, the Virtual Brain Health Center located in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so it's, it's great. I, now, you know, I can be anywhere all over the country. And actually in all over the world, I've been uh, virtually speaking in Mexico and Canada and Israel. And um, so it's been quite an exciting venture to uh, adventure to um, be able to reach people in ways, um, you know, that you might've dreamed of before and thought, well, maybe possible, but it's completely possible. So um, Pandora's box kind of opened a little bit for me regarding that. And uh, I'm just delighted. It's uh, gained a lot of momentum kind of quickly, uh, a little faster than I expected, um, but it's, it's at a pace that's certainly manageable right now. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about what you offer and how your programs help people. Oh, absolutely. So um, I offer really anybody living with cognitive impairment of all age groups. Uh, before COVID, I served also youth, the youth component as well. Um, those who have uh, stroke victims or um, uh, TBI issues. Um, so, uh, and I also serve in the elder, more of the elder contingent of Parkinson's dementia, dementia, all, all types of dementia under that umbrella. Alzheimer's is, as you know, just one of those uh, types of dementia. So um, really right now, the work I do is kind of skewed more towards that elder care community. And um, I'm in my studio right now. So um, behind me is uh, a television screen and I sit a little closer to that television screen. And um, I then um, launch uh, my virtual uh, platform. And so what we do is a lot of, everything is set to music. I am a musician and uh, I've toured around the world in Europe and Asia singing jazz for the, almost 30 years. And um, of course COVID kind of kiboshed that too. But anyway, um, so I, I, I sing jazz, yes, but I sing all types of music and it's all about the, the time of our life type of music, right? So um, what the time of my life versus the time of uh, music, the time of my life music is different perhaps someone who's, who's older than me. So it's, it's about a customized approach to be honest with you. So I need to understand my audience if it's a one-on-one -on -one session, which is what I, I also do those or if it's like a group setting kind of situation, it might be an elder care community or it might be, um, you know, AARP is a sponsor of my program. So that's 50 and above, oftentimes um, that's active aging component there. So I might hit up on, you know, kind of the Motown 50s era there um, versus a senior home that I might harken back to maybe the 40s or even go back as far as the Cole Porter or Gershwin, um, you know, type of tunes. Uh, there as well. So we do a lot of um, ballads and uh, tempos, up tempos. So the goal is to get your heart rate up in my class. So it's almost like if you're in, into fitness, that kind of the hit, H-I-I-T uh, or H-I-T-T, -T, um, 
kind of movement where we elevate your uh, heart rate, we bring it back down, we elevate it again within a, a particular time frame, and then we bring it back down again. So um, there's a cardio component to this as well. It is somewhat of a rigorous class, but it's always about knowing the audience. So um, I do this on Zoom, which is super great because then on Zoom, we can see each other should the participants want to avail their camera to me. But it's super helpful when I can see my audience because then I know either I'm going too fast or I'll need to slow down or I need to pick up the pace because they're doing so well. So um, they really feed me a lot of input so that I know how to conduct this class in that regard. But so we do a lot of hand-eye coordination games too. And sometimes thematics in the terms of, uh, maybe we'll talk about a, a theme of a song, we'll talk about geography or mathematics. Geography, for example, um, Route 66. If you ever planned a motor west, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best, get your kicks on Route 66. And there's a part of that song now, you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. And it goes on and on and on. So maybe we talk about geography. So I'll take a moment in class and rhythmically ask questions such as, you know, what's the capital of Florida? What's the capital of California? What's the capital? And so we do this um, back and forth, this call and response. And that's what makes it so interactive in real time. So there's uh, memory, you know, and then there's hand-eye coordination type of movements. And then of course there's that cardio component. And because I'm a musician, everything is set to music or rhythm. Fantastic, fantastic. What do you love best about doing your programs? Oh my gosh. It's, uh, well, the, so if you're asking about from a virtual standpoint, my answer to you is I love being able to be in more places at once. Mm -hmm. Uh, anybody who can tune in all over the country, all over the world can tune in and we can all be together and create some a level of community together in that moment with one another. So I adore that. I adore that. And I love the feedback that I can get even from facial expressions there. It's just wonderful. And people will roll their eyes and they'll laugh at themselves. Or I make mistakes all the time too in the movements that I do. So they, I, I encourage them to laugh at me. I love that kind of feedback. Um, if you're asking pre-COVID or in, in an in-person scenario, it's very much that in person, because as we all know in this world, nothing can compare to that socialization that comes with being together. There's a togetherness, a shared, um, a shared emotion that we can create together uh, when we're in person to, with one another. I now, luckily, um, I'm based out of Arizona. So um, there are buildings that um, I can go into now, um, and that's wonderful. So I have a, a hybrid version of my, my offerings, which is slowly starting to kind of take a toehold, whereby when I'm in one building with a contingent uh, and we're working together, I have um, a computer, a laptop, and a camera, and that camera is facing at me, and I'm live streaming in conjunction. So it's like a simulcast kind of scenario. So I'm in person, I'm virtual, and then I'm in person and virtual. And it, so I love all of that because the common denominator for what it is that I, my purpose in life, I believe is to um, be of service um, for humanity. And that's what I love so much about my job. That's amazing. And I love hearing, you know, the, all the different components that you're combining into your programs, because it's, they're all the important components of active aging, which is what we talk about all the time is the the brain, the social, the fitness, the, you know, interacting, all that is so crucial to our health. And I, I think a lot of times caregivers think that their loved ones can't participate in those things. Anymore. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and they clearly can. They clearly yes, they can. can. And even the care partner can participate yeah. too. That's what's so great because if you're deeper into the dementia disease, Oftentimes the loved one may not be as recognizable, right? But if they have a lucid moment because we're singing, pack up all your cares and woes, here I go singing low, bye bye blackbird. And so if that's the time of the life of that person, that loved one, um, the care partner can have a window into the person they knew and share that space and time with them together. Yeah, music is so powerful. I, I worked uh, for the Alzheimer's Association many years ago and have worked on uh, care units and 
I, music was always transformative just to watch how people responded and how um, folks who hadn't spoken or danced or done anything in such a long time and you find that right song and all of a sudden they're singing along just as clear as a bell and that that is can be just so amazing so um, it's such a gift to all of us give our viewers today who are out there looking for ways to stay active and involved in their lives what advice do you have for an active involved engaged life I mean, socialization is huge. It's huge. So if, you know, someone is still trying to, you know, stay within the, the safety of their environment for, you know, various reasons, various reasons now, um, you know, try to socialize as much as possible. And, and these virtual platforms are certainly a way to do that if you feel so inclined to want to stay within the safety of your own kind of comfort zone. Um, I think socialization for me is number one for all of humanity. It doesn't matter what age you are. Socialization is a huge part of our growth and development. And we don't stop growing and developing when we're aging. I, you know, the last breath we take in our life, regardless of how old we are, we're still becoming in that last breath we take. So um, my, my recommendation is to try to main, maintain some level of socialization. And then of course, I'm a little biased because I am a musician. So music is, a, and, and we have lots of white papers written on all of this in terms of brain health and music. I mean, I think pretty much m m most of at least America understands that that's a huge important component to thriving, yeah. creatively aging, uh, we can put many names on all of that, but so music is an important part. Now, if we can combine music and socialization together, holy cow, we can move the needle together on all of this. And that's that's why I do what I do. That's what probably why one of the reasons why you do what you do and what you're providing as well, right? Because uh, there's humanity ultimately is the common denominator. And, and music, uh, you know, I've met many people who think, who have said to me, you know, I don't really like music all that much. Let me see, you know, I might want to, you know, I'll ask a few maybe probing questions about where they grew up or what year to graduate from high school. And then I might try to hearken to one of those songs and sure enough, they'll sing it with me. <laughs> oh, I really did like that song. Yeah. <laughs> so music's important. I giggled this morning. My my husband tells me he's not a big music person either. And this morning I heard his radio while he was in the shower blasting out sea shanties. So those good kind of robust, you know, songs. And I thought, well, he's really getting himself riled up this morning. But apparently he does like music and he has hey. and does have some things and it can be nope. energy and bring back memory and all those different things. So um, yes, music brings you joy. And we're so glad that you're doing the work that you're doing. We're thrilled to get to share your classes on A Mighty Good Time. Um, and we'll be uh, sharing more and promoting that as we go along. And um, for anybody that's interested in musical memory care, please do check out amightygoodtime.com and you will find links to um, Shannon's wonderful classes. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to everybody. I look forward to seeing more folks participating. Wonderful. Thanks, Shannon.